Lord's a beauty! Send him in! <laughs> David, get to bed. There's dogs! Uh, come on. Mm -hmm. What, what I mean is, I mean, how many chances have you had to have a share in the race, Austin? I mean, it doesn't happen to people like us, does it? It only happens to millionaires. And I thought you were a millionaire, Claude. Uh, I've not got no more than I've ever had. Except money. Yeah, uh, well, the thing is, what I've done, I've, I've taken him up to Ted Shaw's livery, you know, and he's going to train him professionally, but of course, it's, it's going to cost a few bob. Oh, you're serious then? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you'll spend a bit to win a bit, don't you? But what, what I thought might be an eye or two off with one or two of my real mates a chance to have a share. Have you asked Nick and Kate, yes? I'd rather take him to the knacker's yard. Hey, keep a bit quiet, don't you? Evening. Uh, Nicholas. Don't do it. What's he up to? Well, he's talking about having his racehorse trained professionally. What, he's shelling out real money? It's hard to believe. Well, he must know something about that horse that no one else does, eh, George? You shouldn't be out, it's cold. I wouldn't be out if you were in bed. Well, there's dogs. Oh, there's the spoke up. I should show them how to get to the road. Oh. <laughs> what the? Don't be about, you said. Well, they were no more than a knock. Drive, come on. Ma? You all right, Ma? Are oh, you all right? There you go. That was lucky. Skill. George, put another one on the doctor's slate. <laughs> What is it, lad? <laughs> I couldn't move her. You did the best thing, David. It just hit her. Hit her down. I'll keep an eye out for this ambulance. All right. Hey, Ma, I'll not want to go to hospital. She has to go, David. I can help her there. Will you be all right? Hey. I could stay up late, couldn't I? Kate, 
I'll see you there. I'll try and find out what's happening. Okay. There you go, David. Plenty of sugar. Aye, right, great. So, can you tell me any more about the accident? Mark, I'll be best pleased with us bringing her to hospital. I mean, I'll be in real trouble. No, I don't think so. Well, she's got a hell of a temper. She'll want to be at home. No, it was a car that knocked her over. Aye, right. smack. I couldn't wake her, but I went for the doctor. I didn't know where to look when the doctor weren't at the doctor's, but I found her. Well, there can't be that many vehicles in those woods. Do you know whose it was? We have dogs. Someone you know? Bloody noisy dogs. They were snarling and yapping. I wouldn't have dogs like that. They wanted a good kick up the bum. What sort of car was it, David? Uh, Land Rover. Hey, there's how many folk here? Do you know who the Land Rover belongs to? Oh, hello, Doctor. Marla wants to be off, I reckon. She's going to have to stay in hospital for a while, David. We need to make sure she's better before she comes home. Oh, no, she'll be cross with us. I know. Look, why don't you go and see her? She's just through that door at the end of the corridor. She's had a heart attack. Not serious, but she's pretty weak and badly bruised. Did she say anything about a hit and run? She's very shaken, Nick, and upset about being here at all. Maybe after a good night's sleep. It's hard going with David. He's not going to make much of a witness. Doctor says you're poorly, ma. Fine, lads, now. They make such a fuss when the doctors get hold of you. I ran to the village. You did right. P.C. Rowan. Has he been asking questions? Oh, he has. Tell him I fell. I, I fell, that's all. Listen, David, I fell down and you found me by the track. Ah, oh, you fell? You, you mustn't say out about my being knocked over. You, tell, tell the police that there were nobody in woods. No, no, no dogs, no cars, no, no people. It's, it's important. Can you remember? They had dogs. Well, it has to be a secret. We have to pretend they weren't there. Promise me it'll be a secret. Oh, I promise. You're better off than one of them than this he for ten. What's it in for? Shock absorbers. Belongs to Hunt. Treat it like a tank they do. Something comes back for more. Have you had anyone in with a broken headlamp this morning? No. Why's that? There was a hit and run up at Beckham Wood last night. Branch Stockwell's in hospital. Is she bad? Well, she'd be all right, no thanks to the driver. I'm looking for a Lamb Rover with a broken headlamp. Nasty business. Could be local. It's not easy to find that place. So keep your eyes open, will you, Malcolm? Right. Why would the Chief Inspector ask me to go in for the sergeant's exam again? Eh? Why? Hang on. I'm trying to read it. Yeah, what if there were a sergeant's job going and he had me in line for it? In view of the fact that you only just failed last year, so you weren't lying after all. Oh, go on. Get on with it. You know, finally, you only just failed last year. We feel this would be the right time to reset the examination. Well, come on, Alf. They're always banging on about exams. It's just their way of keeping us out of the pub. I'm serious. The examination's next week. Do you think he's giving me the nod? I don't know. 
That's the Sarge. Early. Oh, not a word with Blake's in mind. He's never let me forget I failed last time. Yes, Sarge. Hello, David. You all right? I'm off to see your mum later. Thought we'd find out what happened last night. Well, can I come in then? Any chance for a cup of tea? David, this vehicle last night, you said it was a Land Rover. Oh, no one here. Sorry? Ma fell over. Yeah, she was knocked over. David, you said you saw a Land Rover. I saw the tracks. I also found a piece of broken headlamp. There's no one here. No car. Ma fell. Right. Struggling, Harry? You can do with losing a bit of weight. Wouldn't do any harm if you'd give his hand. Hey, I'm a client, Harry. I pay good money to this table to have my investment looked after. You know, keep a dog and bark yourself, you know. By the way, uh, stick one of those mineral blocks in Agamemnon's field, will you? Agar who? Agamemnon. Who's he when he's at home? He happens to be me racehorse. Well, he'd better not be far away, cos those are heavy. <laughs> come and have a look at him. No, I've got work Harry, to do. come on, come on. You'll only take a minute. Now then, Harry. Is that an oss or is that an oss? Well, he's fit, Lord. I'll give you that. <laughs> Anybody give the right time to have an interest in something like that? Have you, have you ever thought of, like, having a share in a racehorse? Are you asking me to put my money into a racehorse? I've lost three customers this month already. Well, in that case, you, you can't afford not to be in, can you? I mean, he's going to make us a fortune. And you don't win a raffle unless you buy a ticket. Bye, Claude. His, his mother won first time out at Redcar at 33 to 1. Nearly. So you went out to see the hens? It weren't till we got to bed. I remembered I hadn't shut them up for the night. We got no shortage of foxes to take us hens if chance comes their way. And this was after David had gone out? Before. He were in his bed. So you were already outside when he heard the dogs? Did you hear them? I know now about dogs. And there were a, a vixen howling over by Darley Top. All right, let's start at the other end then. Now, you were knocked over by a car or a Land Rover coming out of the woods. I don't know where you get that from, lad. Didn't your missus tell you it was me heart? I just blacked out. It's lucky my lad came to see what I'd got to. Well, last night, David told me it was a hit and run. Did he? Yeah. I found a piece of broken glass from a headlamp. I thought you were knocked over, Mrs Stockwell. I were not knocked over. My lad's a bit on the slow side, it's no secret. He doesn't always know what's happening around him, especially if he's in a state. He must have been in quite a state last night. Have you talked to him this morning? Yes. Well, happen he's a bit clearer about it all. So you've no need to waste more of your time on it, have you? My name is Jack and I live in the back of the Greta Garbo home With friends I will remember wherever I may roam Cause he thinks he's heard the bomb And 
And here comes Superman Who really puts it on It's lots of fun And I love to run Up and down the stairs I make as much noise as I want And no one ever cares And my name's Jack And I live in the back Of the grand Oh, come on, Alf. You can't do that sergeant's exam with a book in front of you. And come on, arrest without a warrant. It's all right, I know that. So tell us. Yeah, come on, Alf. Where a constable with reasonable cause has reason to suspect that a felony is being committed, he may arrest without warrant anyone who is, with reasonable cause, guilty of the offence. And it's the same for about to commit a felony. Mm. That's very good. All right, try this then. Search without a warrant. Oh, get lost. <laughs> I'm very impressed. It's good to see such dedication to the law of interest and in Ashford Lee Police Station, of all the most unlikely places. Now, this uh, report of yours, Rowan, gives us an unusual angle on police powers. Well, it's a bit difficult to explain, sir. Aye. Right. PC Rowan here is itching to arrest a person or persons unknown for a hit-and-run incident which the supposed victim and sole witness says never took place. And it won't be difficult finding the vehicle that Mrs Stockwell says never hit her. It'll stick out like a sore thumb in the North Riding because it's a muddy Land Rover. <laughs> Ma! Ma! Oh, something bad's happened! They want to keep an eye on you for a few more days. Well, I I'm grateful for all that's been done, but I've no time for all this fussing. I must be in my own home. I'm, I'm right as rain now. No, you're not. And you haven't been for a while, have you? I've David to think on. I'll pop in on him when I can. And next time I'm in Ashford, I'll bring him to see you. Look, if you're worried that he can't manage on his own... I, I said no about that. He can manage well enough for a bit. I can see to my own child. I'll have no busybodies popping up there and poking their noses round. I'll, I'll not stay. I'll um, tell David how you are. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine.
No one knows who the father was. The other bloke came down from Sunderland. He used to buy the pegs off them when Florence's father was still coppicing the woods. Stayed in a tent there. Some people thought it was him. But didn't David have any help? Folk didn't think about that. The Stockwells kept themselves to themselves. Now, the old man died during the war. I don't suppose the wood's been worked since then. Bit of firewood, maybe. So how do they keep going? I know one thing, though. David won't be able to stay up there for long without Florence. Whiskey, Claude? Ah, well, all right, then. Go on. Large. Hey, did you uh, read that article in the paper about all the increasing all the horses in the Metropolitan Police? Are they? Huh? Apparently they're out doing all the coppers and the IQ tests. <laughs> Very good, Claude. That's the best you can do. I'm off. Cheers. <laughs> Claude, you'll never go to heaven. Hey, we went to see your horse today. Uh, yeah, how much did you say a share was? How many times do I have to tell you? Tell everybody they'll all want to be in. We'll talk about it later, all right. Five pounds. I must say, I was very impressed. It looked like he'd got a bit of class. Yeah. What a class? That horse is a complete and utter thoroughbred. If it could talk, it wouldn't speak to any of us, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> was he a bit confused? No. Upset. Worried. But he knew what he was talking about? Yeah. He said a car hit his mother. Well, he's not saying that now. And neither's Florence. Could be she's lying. She's got David lying, too. Why? Well, maybe she's frightened of someone. Someone local, like we thought. Doctor! I need doctor! You're in. And don't forget, you don't back the oss until I tell you, right? And if I were you, I'd, I'd keep a bit quiet about having shares, like, because you know what they're like round here. They get a bit jealous if they think somebody's onto a good thing, eh? <laughs> right. You better put your name down for a roller. <laughs> don't worry, Uncle George. Sometimes you just got to go for it. <laughs> You're right. It just makes me a bit uneasy to see Claude smiling, that's all. Mm. <laughs> hey, let's celebrate. OK. There's not much I can do, David. It's been badly mauled. You stop it dying! Well, I could clean it up, stop the bleeding, but I don't know. But it won't live! Not long! Let's try. Not in the mood, Malcolm. I want a serious word. What word's that? I can't understand why people hunt stuff they can't eat. That's their business. But when their business interferes with my business, it stops being just their business. It becomes my business. What? I'm talking about badger digging. Eh? Yes, you might as well, eh? And you know what happens after badger digging. All of a sudden, the cops start coming round asking questions of everybody. You've got a nerve, Greengrass. I've followed the Ashford Lee hunt for 20 years. Badger digging? If you're accusing me of having nothing to do with badger digging... Don't come the old soldier with me, Malcolm, cos I am to know you were involved in baiting a few years back. Well? Well, I don't want outsiders coming round here spoiling things for me, so I'm just marking your card. So you can just go and mark theirs. Got it? A 
saw a badger when I was about 12. Well, at least I think you were a badger. My mate said it was an overweight sheep dog. Well, you wouldn't want to see this one. No, something had a right old guy here. Morning, Sarge. Morning, Ron. Kate thought we might have been dogs. I suppose dogs do have a go at badgers. Yeah, they will. But they reckon a good badger can say a dog off, though. Nature study this morning, is it? No, Sarge. No, Kate had to sort out a half-dead badger last night. What you and your missus do in your private life is your own business. Ventress. Uh, he had something to do, Sarge. Right. Hasn't Alf told him? Oh, <laughs> Having trouble with your bowels, Ventress? No, Sarge. Uh, I mean, uh, just a bit. I don't know what the modern ideas on potty training are, but my mother persuaded me at quite an early age that the best results were achieved more comfortably with the trousers off. Oh. Oh, indeed, Ventress. Now, when you feel you can make it back to your desk. I thought I might try and get some more out of David Stockwell about that hit and run. So what did he say? Not much. All he talks about is badgers. I think I'll have a look around the woods. Come and talk to me, Rowan. If you're searching the woods, you best know what you're looking for. On my beauty. <laughs> Morning, Claude. Uh, Harry. Been thinking about this horse of yours. Oh, huh? Decided to fill your boots, have you? Yeah. But the spare cash wouldn't go amiss. Mind you, or not, there's going to be a risk. I thought you knew me better than that. If there were any risk, I wouldn't have my money in it, would I? Don't worry. That horse is going to be hooked up until it's a certainty. Hooked up? Huh. Not trying too hard to win until them in the know have been told to dip their bread. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're not a bad judge, partner. <laughs> You're beautiful, isn't he? Badger baiting, Rowan. This came in from Middlesbrough last week. It's mostly RSPCA information. It's a new one on me, Sarge. It's not on me, I'm afraid, although it's been a few years back. Now, somewhere in here. Yes. Here they are. Now, there are various ways to get a badger out. Say you got the dog in the tunnel behind him, biting him. And you're outside the hole with these. Now, they're powerful little animals, but they won't do much harm like that. You just pick them up and drop it in the bag. Now, these go on the end of flexible rods, like chimney brushes. Now, you've got the badger trapped. You push the rod down the hole until the barb finds him. You twist, the barb bites into the skin, and you just keep pulling. Be pretty bloody when it comes out, but it'll still be alive. Well, I picked these up on a raid a few years back, and using them, counts as cruelty. Although magistrates round here don't think it's worth more than a modest fine. But you do. Oh, I. I do.
Hello, David. You off to see your mum? Aye. How's the badger? Oh, eating fit to bust. We can let it go now. Back with its mates. They've gone. Where? Just gone. Oi! Go! Oh. It wasn't me because I wasn't there, and if I was, it must have been somebody else. I don't doubt it, Claude. I want you to help me. What were your inquiries? What do you know about badgers? Badgers? Yeah, small little black and white furry things, eat worms. Not as much as you, by the sound of it. No, I wouldn't know a badger set if I fell into one. So if I were to take you up to Beckham Woods where the stock wells live... To the woods? I didn't know you cared. Look, I've got better things to do than to go on countryside rambles with coppers. Would you want me to find out what those better things are? When do you want to go? Now. Come on. Oh, not all that. Son, are you managing? Oh, I am. You're eating all right. I found a badger. It were poorly. There's work needs doing, David. There was a dead one too. I took it to the doctors. What? No, I took the the poorly badger to the doctors. She made it better. Ma's doing well for visitors today. Here, why don't you go and buy her some flowers? She'd like that. Glad you both kept your mouth shut, Florence. Is this it? He wanted me to show you a set. If you'd have wanted a badgerologist, you should have gone and got one. Well, I've heard they can dig. This lot must use a bulldozer. Oh, don't look at me. I'm not an expert on badgers. I mean, they don't bother with what I can't eat. Well, that must make them sleep easy in their beds. I mean, the vermin, aren't they? I don't know, perhaps the Stockwells thought they are after their ends. No, nah, it doesn't make sense. That David's been looking after an injured one. <laughs> you can't take any notice about what he does. I mean, he's something short of a tanner. You're being as generous as ever. So, are there any more like this? How many more do you want to see? I want to see if there's any more in these woods, Claude. That's not a problem, is it? Only for my feet. Come on. Still here. I'm waiting for the bus. Well, you'll have a long wait. The last one went an hour ago. Off to walk then. Come on, up in some. Oh, thanks, Mr. Capture. Can we go home now, sir? You know, Blaketon was saying that a badger that'll put up a good fight will be worth about £10, even more down south. Really? Look, the only interest I've ever had in badgers is a shaving brush that belonged to me dad. And it's so old, it's got less hair on than my head. No one's pointing the finger at you, Claude, but you know something. You've been twitching something terrible all afternoon. I'm not surprised on the back of your bike with my complaint. What complaint? I don't want to spoil your dinner. Look, someone's been digging badgers, Claude. You know who it is. I don't. I've no idea. Well, you know it's going on. All right, look, there were, there were some blokes up on Denby Top with terriers last night. I mean, they're probably the same mob as has been digging around here. But they weren't from around here. They were, they were strangers. How close did you get? Close enough for a quick scarper. They're, they're a nasty lot, you know, terrier men. 
If you're gonna watch it if you're going out after them, they're not all that bothered about who they hurt. I know. That's why Florence Stockwell was lying in hospital. Come on. Your mouth's been poorly for some time. You'll need help, huh? Aye. You need some money from time to time. Well, I'll sell more firewood. You can help her with money. You can help me as well. Aye. Right. I bet you know every badge you set from here to Aidensfield. Look, I've got these two mates in Middlesbrough. They want to have a look. Oh, your mother said it was all right before. I've got to go. Look, you're the expert on these. These guys will give you two quid a time for each set. Thanks for... Thanks for the lift. I've got to go. You could have a tennis stash to wait for your mom when she comes out. That'll make life easier for her. David! Our little secret. Surprise for your mom. I don't know where you got this from, Colonel Smedley. There are no accusations flying around, and I can assure you that no one is suggesting that any members of the Ashford Lee Hunt... All right, I am sorry, Colonel Smedley. Your cooperation is much appreciated. Thank you. I just had a nice chat with the Master of Foxhounds. Who's been winding him up? Oh, I don't know. I think he wanted to give me a lecture on country ways and how to avoid treading on people's toes. So what are you going to do? I think I'll go and see David again. I've got to give him that ten bob back. And it's time I talk to him properly. Asked me to give you this. You don't have to pay her. No, that was for what she did. Well, I'll leave it with you, shall I? She wanted to know how the patient's doing. Oh, it's it's all right. Oh, good. I went for a walk through these woods this afternoon. I saw that set that was dug up. Was that where you found your badger? Well, they went. They, they just went. Now, that's not true, is it? Someone dug that set up. Now, some might have got away, but some were killed, and some would have been taken away. David, you know it's against the law to dig up badgers, don't you? To take them away and to hurt them. No one took them. They use dogs, don't they? Put them in a pit, see how long before the dogs can kill them. It can be hours before they die. No! You've got to stop them! I can help you. This thing's well added. I've come about money. Well, it's no good luck at here, lad. Badger money. Oh. I'm glad it went in, David. You're not as daft as you look. 
You've no right to use him like that. He wants to do something to stop them. We can't do anything unless we catch them digging. And what if it goes wrong? He's only got a meat capture on his friend. Oh, yeah, the men who knocked an old woman down and left her. It's like sending a child. He wants to stop these people, Kate. He knows exactly what it's about and he's made his own decision. He wants these blokes done, Kate. He's got a right to, hasn't he? As soon as you get captured to the sets, you slip away. Oh, no, no, I can help. You come straight back here and lock the doors. OK. Bellamy! Behind your tree! Untouched. Beautiful. We can smell them. <laughs> Come on. There'll be a fiber in this. the police. Stop what you're doing and stand completely still. Run for it, Al! I would drop that if I were you. No! Put that down. <laughs> ah! Looking for these? <sighs> They'll end up with a fine for the badger digging, but that's the way it is. But by the time they've been charged with resisting arrest and assaulting police officers... Bit more than a modest fine, then, Sarge. I didn't ask them to resist, did I, Rowan? Capture certainly did. Ah. Well, keep that sling on, Bellamy, for the magistrates. It all helps. What are you doing, Ventress? You could use a piece of steak on that eye, Sarge. If you must cram for your sergeant's exam, I suggest you do it at home. You knew. Of course I knew. And I have it on very good authority. There's a sergeant's job coming up at Pickering. What? So try not to let me down this time, will you? Promotion's the only way I can get rid of you. All you got to do now is pass. <laughs> if anything happens to Florence, it'd be terrible if you were sent off to some sort of home. What's the alternative? Well, I had to see Eric Masters this afternoon. He's got a bit of bronchitis. He's doing the gardens at the hall on his own now, and he reckons Lord Ashfordley would let him take on someone else, just to help out. And I don't suppose there's a cottage that goes with a job, with running water and electricity. Could be. You'll never get them out of the woods. Well, we can try. You can start tomorrow when you go up to tell her there'll be no charges against her. How did you know? All right, Malcolm, spit it out. You've been giving me daggers all evening. You know your job? I hope so. Well, there's folk reckon you should find something better to do than see a man like Harry Capshaw locked up. You know what he's been doing? 
It's had hard times and a family to look out for. If he turns to a country round him for a few extra quid, I think that's his business. Now, listen, I turn a blind eye to a lot of things round here. But there's got to be something wrong with people who like watching animals being torn to pieces in a pit. Yeah, and anyone who thinks different can drink somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Claude, I'm glad you're calling. There's a lot of people talking about you. Perhaps I'd like to hear my side. <laughs> How many did you say had a share in this horse of yours? How many more times that I've got half a share and there's six of you with an equal share in the other half? Well, we reckon there's about 11 others in it up to now. Well, you, you know what they like around here, George. I mean, they hear you're onto a good thing, so what do they do? They make out they're in on it at all, do they? Well, that is what they say. Isn't it? I'd like to meet these people. You can. They're standing behind you. Are they? You better pour me a very large scotch. Think he'll get on all right? Should be safe enough now. Not many places animals can do what they want. It's always people. People can't leave anything alone. 